Hi folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another Hugh Rocco interviews on location. This week we have guitarist, sax player, songwriter, awesome Mr. Mark Whiteley. Hi Mark. Thank you, Hugh. No Thank problems. You. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. You yeah. can probably see them. Yeah. And I'll start off by who are your influences? Well, well, in the 60s, of course, um, we were all growing up listening to the Beatles, Stones, Hollies, yeah. Kinks. And actually, that's the kind of stuff we play now in the Martial Hearts Band, which, yeah. uh, which I'm in. Um, but as far as my songwriting goes, it would be more West Coast, California, and US music, rock yeah. music. Um, Jackson Brown, The Boss. The Boss. Great steam. <laughs> um, Very good. Uh, also... Uh, songs by Heart and um, quite a big range. Yeah, yeah. That's great. West Coast America was really my favourite scene. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and what is your go-to band right at this moment in time? Who are you listening to mostly? Well, I don't know. I guess I guess as like a lot of people of my age, um, don't listen to a lot of modern music. Really. No, not really. Um, I like. There are a few bands that I, I, I like. I like uh, Kings of Leon a lot. Yeah. Because exactly. I think they write some good songs. Yep. Um, well, Sex on Fire being one, that's just sort yep. of massive. Yep. Molly, Molly's Chambers, yep. great song. Their last album, which is called Walls, has got an absolutely amazing track on called uh, Find Me. Okay, I've not heard Which has some great guitar work on I think I've only really heard the first album and maybe the singles. Yeah. That, that, that was in yeah. the charts, but. I also like uh, some uh, uh, like like country rock music, like uh, the Shires. Yeah, have you heard of them? Yeah, the, the, the boy See, and girl duo. Yeah, I love I love country myself. Yeah, well you've you've heard that through me. Yeah, one time. Yeah, there's country music and country. There's country music that kind of. Yeah, you kind of. Old. It's close to rock, and then there's country which is very traditional. Really old. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But we wouldn't have had the rock without. That, so that's true so there you yeah. go so better the Hank Williams and all that yeah yeah they were they were, they were, yeah. they were fantastic um, now here's a stupid question have that's you ever been fired from a band <clears throat> well I've not been in enough bands to be fired <laughs> to be fired <laughs> from <laughs> um, <laughs> no I've most no I, I've been in bands that have split up because uh, because people wanted to do different things go different ways yeah yeah um, but uh, I've only been in... Or I'll flip that question. Have yeah. you ever had to fight anyone? No. No? No. So there you go, there's no. your answer. No. Yeah. No, it's not something I'd look forward to. No, me either. Um, I had to once and it was and it was a friend as well and it was just terrible. Yeah. And you know who you are. It was terrible. <laughs> uh, I'm still friends with them now, thank God. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's never nice. It's never I mean, nice. in any band, there are band politics. Uh, yeah. And there are times when you disagree about things. What songs to to learn and play yeah. um, who's going to sing what particular song right. who's going to play guitar or bass we switch a lot of instruments around a lot in our, yeah, in yeah. our band well I, I've seen you do yeah. that yeah. I've not seen that martial arts but I remember when I used to play <coughs> your jam nights and I stood yeah. in on drums at that time yeah. where, uh, and you done a lot of swap and it's yeah. good yeah. if you just can do it great well it Why works not? for us you know. it might yeah, not work yeah. for everybody but it, it no. takes time the, the problem is on stage there's that delay when people are switching instruments around, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got to talk and say, right, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, guys, it's going to be sixty seconds before. <laughs> we... But you know, people it's are very forgiving. So yeah, and um, so how did you land the gig with Martial Hearts? Uh, Martial Hearts started in the autumn of two thousand and fourteen, um, but a few of us have been playing jamming through open mics together. Yeah, uh, for quite some time before that. Um, we had the uh, we very fortunately had the f use of a free rehearsal place <coughs> in Frankby in Wirral and and we uh, we just we just went to try to, just to really try things out and see how we gelled. We only started with three or four songs and it grew from there. Yeah. But um, I think in any band project, it's going to take at least a year yeah. before you yeah. really settle in. Gel. You know, and even longer before you you get to that stage where. You can do gigs 
um, every week or every couple of weeks without that much need to rehearse. And mm. In the end, you could use the gigs themselves as a, a kind of, uh, not exactly a rehearsal, but a kind of confirmation session. Yeah, yeah. it solves it. Yeah. It gets better and I think better. we've reached that point now. Great. Um, but it's taken a few years to get there. It's worth it in the end. Yeah. Definitely, I would say. Um, so, what's your approach to writing songs? Well, um, especially in a bit the guy with the ear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've only I've only really written about fourteen songs in my life, and un- unlike some other people, um, they kind of came to me. Yeah. Uh, or the music, at least, just came yeah. to me in my head, um, and then the thing is, you've got to you, you've got to grab a piece of paper and get that get that. Get, get, get those chords, them, yeah. yeah. Get those chords on paper as yeah. as uh, fast as you can, you know. But so a lot of people will write the chords for the main lyrics. Well, the lyrics, yeah. With me, the lyrics can uh, come second, and they that they are the hardest part to do, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think anyone can write lyrics, but to write good lyrics, meaningful, meaningful lyrics, yeah, I know what you mean. Is really really difficult, and I struggled for a long long time. Um, yeah. And I'm still not happy with the lyrics on some of the lyrics on my album, but um, but uh, is, uh, you know, is, uh, like, yeah, the, the, this is the album which came, the out, album there, folks. came out in you 2013. Can, uh, get a copy of that, I'm sure, from Matt. Called so. uh, Airbrush Hollywood. Is it on any iTunes, anything like that? Or? It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify. It's on Spotify. Have you drunk that Disco Kid? It's That's sorry? the newest one, the Dis- Disco Kid. Uh, disco the, Kid? No, Disco Kid. That's another one. That's amazing. Is it? Yeah, I'll, I'll be joining that this week. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you have to check that out. Yeah, it's also um, I, uh, it, it's also I mean, it's supported by a record company called Spin Up Records. All oh, right. Which okay. is a small branch of Universal Records, and uh, so uh, I mean, this gets played around the world in airports and shopping malls and <laughs> um, you know. I, I get, I get a small get amount of, of, yeah. of streaming money from that. Well, when I was watching the uh, Disco Kid, uh, there was a guy there and he's put his stuff up on it. And one of his biggest pages he said back was like $500. So what was that? Yeah. That was another money. And that's just be plays. Or just be being on the, you know, what was it? The, the chat thing. Yeah. So it's worth, yeah. well worth doing. It is. Everybody seems to be going there now. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny actually because uh, somebody sent me a, a, a video the other day of, and, and I never knew this was happening, but in Asia and apparently even in the UK, there are streaming farms. Yeah. So there are uh, offices where they've got thousands of mobile phones right. and uh, you know iPods and whatever, and they're streaming songs twenty four hours a day, <sighs> and the record companies are using this method uh, as a means of getting records in the charts. Wow. I don't know, I knew, never even knew that was going because on. Because it's, it's, it's totally different now because you don't have to be that big pop star that we all wanted to be when we were no. up and coming. No. You know, we always, you, now YouTube and what we're doing now, it's just phew, people You can watching. do it all yourself. Yeah, yeah. You can do it all yourself. You can get a record and there's company. And there's this, what is this? And now there's I Am My Own Label. Yeah. There's that as well now. So yeah. there's even yeah. more, yeah. Absolutely. That is the way to go. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You've still got to have the talent, uh, yeah. but it, oh, it's sorry, it's so much more uh, accessible. Yeah, now. and you're right there with the talent because I remember my mate Stuart Fong told me years ago in the studio I went in to do a session on drums for Billy McKenzie, and uh, he says to me, "There's a young guy who came in and the drum kit that he had was a phenomenal." Shock. He said he couldn't play it. He said I recorded them and they stood back and went, "Thought it would be sounding great." He said, you can only. I can only make you sound as good as you can play. Yeah. They thought they were going to come out of the studio like Bon Jovi or something, you know, yeah. and it's like... Yeah. Yeah. No. And although it's possible to do a recording in your, in, in your bedroom or on a yeah. Tascam machine or something like yeah. that, um, it's always better to go into the studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and have... Uh, uh, and if you can, you know, get other musicians to come and join oh, you. Oh, definitely, because... Uh, I mean, although when I write myself, I, I, I play everything. But... It would be great to have somebody else play. Yeah. Because it just changes yeah. what you might do, put down. Yeah. They could sort of be, well, that's not quite what I would play. No, 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 that's better. Yeah. You, oh, 
So and on, yeah, on, yeah, on, on this album, Airbrush Hollywood, uh, I was fortunate enough, because we were doing it initially for charity, uh, yeah. uh, performers like Brian Saxophone Jones oh, yeah. were on it, Absolutely um, brilliant. doing a blues number, and I, I was just so fortunate getting some really good musicians to help me on it. Well, that's great. All it always helps. Yeah. Getting an awesome musician. Okay, we'll move on. Have you got any funny stories from playing in bands or yourself uh, or stupid, silly stories? Uh, silly, <laughs> stupid <laughs> stories? You know. Well, I'll tell you what, if I take my glasses off here, okay, it's going to- if I take my glasses off, you, you know that I don't know whether you know this, but I'm I'm always getting, uh, I'm always I'm always getting, um, I was going to say accused of looking like Rodney Trotter, from uh, Only yeah. Fools and Horses. Yeah. Well, I and, thought that uh, when I first saw you. At least, uh, <laughs> uh, at least once a week, I you know I get this. People will come up to me and they'll say, "Do you know who you look like?" <laughs> and I'll say, "Yes." Yes. <laughs> And there was a girl at the gig last night. She came up and she said, "I want to ask you a question." And I said, "No, don't don't ask me that question." <laughs> oh yes, I want to ask you the question. I said, "Don't ask me the question because I know what the question is." And she said, "Oh, I still want to ask. I still want to ask you." And I said, "I tell you what, don't ask me the question, but mm. I'll tell you the answer." <laughs> yeah, tell me, I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, she said, "Okay then." I said, "Rodney." <laughs> <laughs> and actually it was really funny because uh, she and a, a, another crowd of, of women at the front uh, yeah. during, during the gig they were shouting Rodney Rodney, Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> you go no so, no uh, it's something I have to put so up it could obviously work, working for you you know what I mean it's the, well, <laughs> hey why are you playing the band up here for Rodney <laughs> uh, so I I just can't get away I can't escape from Rodney no um, I'm, I'm, that's brilliant though and um, do you still practice a lot um, well, I, before a gig, I, I, I don't need, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't practice guitar because, uh, my, my role in martial arts anyway is, uh, <coughs> is, uh, a little bit in the background. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm playing acoustic guitar against yeah. two electric guitars. It has its moments where I need, where the acoustic guitar is really needed, but I, I, I know the guitar work backwards. So as long as the guitar is in tune. Yeah. I'm fine. Well, that helps. Um, Definitely. I do have to do a little practice on the saxophone before any gig because uh, there's never any time when you get there. It's not that. You've got to um, make sure it's tuned. And yeah, you've got to try and make sure it's in tune. Uh, but 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 you've got to warm up and yeah, you've got yeah. to get your your mouth muscles <coughs> moving and you've got to make sure your breathing is is okay and um, it, it's just not the same if you just race in there and try to try to do it. Yeah. So I always. Tr- even if it's only 20 minutes before a gig at home, I will try and... And the other thing is making sure you've got a, a saxophone reed that is working. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you've, you've got to run it under the tap, you've got to set it up and make sure it's ready for the gig. Because mm-hmm. you, you, so you, you can't do that when you get to, <laughs> to a pub or something. If I knew that, I'd be a saxophone. Yeah. Mind you, I, I haven't played the sax, so I love listening to it. If it's played well, if it's played terrible, I've, I've heard that as well. Well, you'd hear you probably hear that if you came to, to our. No, I've heard you playing it. And it sounded great. <laughs> I've heard you playing it at the, the, the jam nights, and it sounded great. Well, I do. I do use the saxophones at uh, or the the tenor sax anyway at, at yeah. open mic because we do do quite a lot of uh, of R and B and jazz numbers, and we do stuff like hit the road jack, and we'll do yeah. uh, unchain my heart, and we'll do so yeah. We don't do very much blues, but we'll do. Um, uh, so some some numbers where sax really complements it quite well, like Light mm. My Fire. Yeah. Uh, I had to play the sax break in How Long, the old Paul Carrick song. Yeah, that's probably. Uh, but it's not on the record. It's not just the guitar well, solo. I just, I just mm-hmm. take that guitar break. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Change it to sax and it works quite well. Do you still do um, Never Tear Us Apart? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, there's we'll sax that. in that, isn't there? Yeah, yeah um, the sax um, works really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, great yeah. song for the sax, that. Yeah, have you mastered? Will you? Are you doing no, that? no, I haven't. We tried, we, no. we tried that with Eric, and um, we couldn't quite get it off. And it wasn't Eric; it was we just kept getting it wrong, <laughs> and Eric kept going wrong because yeah. we got it wrong. It was like, it, we just couldn't seem to get it together. Yeah, it's pretty tough to do that. I mean, I'm I, I've Great been tune. trying to do Pink Panther for uh, oh well, you know, 
five that's, years. That's a definite. Mm-hmm. Five years, mm-hmm. and uh, actually, Matt, our keyboard player, and me, we we we, we came here to my house uh, yeah. one one day, and we we said, right, this afternoon, <laughs> we're gonna it. pin down Pink Panther, and we did. We got it. You know, we went through it about eighteen times, and it was great. Yeah. And then we just circumstances happened where we didn't we didn't get to use it in the pub or anywhere. So, you know, you just forget then. Yeah, you, you just oh well, hang on. Uh, we're happened? gonna have to rehearse it again. It's so, yeah. yeah, you've got to keep playing the songs in order to 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 be able to play them well. Yeah, definitely, I would say so. But I'm not giving up on Pink Panther. No, and I will well, take a look at Will. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll come and see you on Wednesday, and you play. <laughs> I want to come and see you. <laughs> well, I, I <laughs> It's too short notice for the Pink Panther there. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'll bring the sax along, we'll do something. Yeah. Um, so do you do you prefer playing live or playing in the studio? Or just do you love everything? Oh, studio work is terrible. I hate it. Yeah. Because, as I'm sure you'll know, it's 95% um, Hanging around. <laughs> sitting down on the sofa, if you're lucky enough to have a sofa in the studio. Uh, and it's Coffee. 5% of the time playing yeah. isn't it and most of the time and getting it I mean, wrong you know I mean Paul Robotham who, who, who engineered my album a lovely guy and he knows what he's doing he's brilliant on Cubase and so on yeah yeah but most of the time I was sitting down just watching him you know twiddling the twiddling the way <laughs> and, you know, yeah, and we were listening back to stuff so no I don't really enjoy Stuart but, but any live performance uh, you know whether you're out there in front as the lead singer or, yeah. or whatever you're doing or in the background as I often am in martial arts slightly in the background yeah. be, behind the two lead singers but part of the team that provides the you know part of the engine room yeah. I like to think of it where we've got the you know the bass the, the drums and, and me um, helping out there really so Amazing. oh I love life life so if you could be in any band past or present which band would it be? Oh. Or just a chance to play <laughs> along with the singer or anything like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, it would have to be the Eagles, oh. without a doubt. Well, there you are, yeah. harmonising. Harmonising, um, great songs. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, withstood a lot of bad times and yeah. you know, they're still playing, they're still well, touring. Well, you never know, you can maybe get Finn's Guild spot. Uh, if you put your name for him. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's playing yeah. with them now, isn't he? Good old Vince, he great is. player, Vince. And they've got a, they've got a guy called Stuart uh, Smith. Yeah, who, so, yeah. who've been with Don Henley for a long time he's kind of at the side <laughs> with Joe Walsh now yeah, yeah. But Joe Walsh oh, and him fantastic but Stuart plays the he plays the twin guitar in Hotel California yeah who does that bit um, and Joe does something else Z- but um, yeah it'd have to be the Eagles yeah, yeah. and oh, I'm going I've, I'm going to see them again next year I've seen them twice but going again next year oh right I'm going to ask you what gear you're using because you've got loads of lovely guitars oh, here. And then I'm going to I love to away, talk about gear. Because after this, I'm going to ask you different. Okay. Well, um, I've, so, got, I've, got, I've got four guitars, all, all semi-acoustic guitars. Yeah. Uh, one is an Epiphone Dove, which is um, a copy of the Gibson Dove. Okay. So the Epiphone Dove costs uh, about £240, and the Gibson Dove, Costs two thousand four hundred yeah, pounds. There's a big difference. And when they're plugged in, really, you cannot tell the difference. No, you usually find that out. Yeah. Right, know. this guitar was the only kind of uh, expensive original guitar I've got, which is uh, it's it's the it's the Springsteen um, yeah. model Takamini. So you'll often see Springsteen playing exactly this yeah. guitar on stage. Uh, it, it's pretty good. I bought this from a a guy in the Isle of Man who brought it over to Liverpool. Met me yeah. in the Adelphi and. Uh, Paid for the guitar there, and it's uh, it's had some work on it from Barry at uh, KGB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but it is is a lovely guitar. I use this one in the band. Um, Brilliant. It it's it's pretty light. It, it's not a uh, it's not a heavy sound. Um, probably I could do with a, a a deeper strumming sound really in the in the yeah. in the band. But you know it looks the part and uh, it sounds great when it's uh, when it's amplified. Yeah. But, it well, looks great. And I have uh, I've brought down another guitar. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Uh, I'm sure you recognise this as uh, 
this is a vintage uh, make, and it's a copy of the uh, John Lennon J160E yeah. Gibson, okay. which uh, Lennon wrote a lot of his songs on. Yep. Um, it's got a pickup in it as well. It's well, it hasn't got the original pickup. Uh, no, it's got. KGB have put new electrics inside. Okay. I think it's got LR bags or something similar. Okay. Uh, electrics in. It works though. Uh, and it is a lovely guitar for for, for, for picking. Yeah. That sort of thing. It's great for open mics. And it, it's actually been, well, um, apparently it's been withdrawn from the market because it's one of the guitars that um, Gibson threatened to sue over. Okay. Uh, so the story goes. Yeah. So they've withdrawn this model. So it's actually quite rare now. Wow. But if you were to buy the, the Gibson version of this, which you still can, right. um, again, it will cost you, you know, two and a half grand. Oh, wow. At yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. I think this cost me about 200 and the the setup work, the new the new heads yeah. and the electrics cost about 300 So, but I've got a nice guitar out of it. Oh, it's nice, yeah. yeah. Really nice. Saxophones? You saxophones, want to talk about yeah, saxophones? Yeah. Oh, okay, so some interesting saxophones. Got yeah, loads of saxes there. This people. is a very, just feel the weight of that here. Because yeah, uh, it's very heavy. Yeah, that's Because heavy. it's copper bronze uh, bell here. Uh, this is a, a saxophone that has been, uh, the metal's been made in China. The, the, it's been put together in Europe by a company called uh, Bauhaus Wallstein. Yeah, I can and see that there, Bauhaus. It's a copy of the Yanagasawa. If you can see that there. Yeah. And that, the Yanagasawa 992, the Japanese 992 Yanagasawa yeah, yeah. costs Beautiful. about four and a half thousand pounds. Wow. Well, this is an identical copy which weighs twice as much. Uh, yeah, I don't know why it weighs twice yeah, as much. But um, this one costs about. Uh, 800 something yeah. like that but it's it's, uh, it's so identical is that, right? is that cheap for a sax then? it's say, expensive a for, a, for, for a Chinese uh, originated copy it's expensive yeah but it, it, it's a good sax yeah. and then I've got the that's the tenor of course and I've got the sure. I've got the uh, the baby version of that exactly the same which is the also uh, the okay. also version it's exactly the same only uh, still smaller a bit heavy isn't it? it's pretty heavy for a, an also Amazing. sax yeah. That's that one, and then and I have the monster. again. I have one <laughs> one uh, original Yanagasawa, uh, which I'll bring over. Just the lacquer's been taken off this, yeah, so it's that, it just original brass. It's, uh, bit, um, it's it's tarnished, of course. It looks but well used. Well used. That's the word that okay. So guess guess the date on this, Hugh. Oh, well, you're not going to show me. Are you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe seventies, sixties. I don't know. Is it? Oh yeah, I like it. This is. Well, I'm not sure. It's somewhere between 1967 and 1970. My year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this, so this is a, a, a Japanese saxophone. Uh, if you were to buy something like this now that was um, a, a Yanagasawa like this, yeah, yeah. it would cost somewhere between three and four grand. Wow. This one, um, I was very fortunate to buy this off a of sax tutor. Um, yeah. and, and I... You know, I swap them around. I, I leave them for a while and swap yeah. them around because they've all got slightly different tones. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, they would do. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah. Especially sizes. Of course, the mouthpiece is very, very important with saxophones. Yeah. Well, you've said that. You can buy mouthpieces that cost five or six hundred pounds. Wow. Really. Unbelievable. I'll show you what I've got. Does the one mouthpiece for every one of them. Like yeah. No. This no. is a mouthpiece for the tenor. So this is for the, the, tenor. the larger ones. Obviously, it's got a wood, wooden reed, reed here, yeah. which you can buy them in different strengths. I know about, about the reed. My dad used to play yeah. the chanter while well, he used to try. Ah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. used to laugh. Now, this looks like plastic, but it's actually, uh, strangely enough, it's it's hardened rubber. Yeah. It's hard rubber. Yeah. Well, I've never gone on with the metal ones. Metal ones are often used for rock music. Yeah, yeah. But I prefer the ebonite or hard rubber. This this is a, an American Mayer, um, which would knew these would cost about £100. So it's not so bad as the five hundred. Well, once you've got, uh, I mean, I think Brian Jones has got. He's, he's got uh, mouthpieces that he's had since the sixties. So he's had the same mouthpiece. So uh, once you get, once you can get on with a, a mouthpiece, yeah. and you're used to it, and it's used to you, then yeah. you know. Well, I suppose it's, you I suppose only need for one. me. It's like it's like a guitar. 
If I pick up certain guitars, I just can't go on because it's just. Well, I can't get on with electric like guitars because if I bought an electric guitar, it would probably be one of those, uh, you know, the big I Ibanez jazz ones, the yeah. uh, uh, artists. Uh, is it uh, artists? I think it's artists. Like the, the big Bixby's on them and stuff. Quite fancy that. Yeah, or the Gretches. They look like that. All well. the Gretches, yeah. But See, I, for me, they, I can't go on with them. I, just, I find them too big. Too big. I like the smaller guitars, maybe because I've got small hands. What, 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 I, what I can't. Deal uh -huh. with on the on 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 the Telecaster or <coughs> tele, tele or the or the Strat is yeah. the the weight and balance. Yeah. Now it's probably just because I'm not used to it, but but somehow it's it just feels to me as if my hand's being dragged down here. Yeah, yeah. And there's not enough here, and I can't. I just can't get the balance. You should. You should. For you, you probably should buy an an Ibanez S because they're so thin, and you can go like that. All right. So yeah, so it's yeah. getting back to that. I know. What do you mean? Um, With gear you've got to go. Well, I don't think gear. you need to necessarily spend a lot no. of money to get a good guitar. Yeah. So I try to tell this to kids and they go, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, whatever it is now that's in, it could be, I don't know, Noel Gallagher or something. I've got to get his guitar. It's because of him. And it's no because the guitar's good. He could go up there tomorrow with a lump of wood and they'd want that. And you've got to try and get that into the kids' heads. It's like it's like all your phones and everything. That's better than that. I know that's better than that. It's no. Stop. Yeah. And you've got to get that in the kids. Well, we uh, use a, a, quite a cheap guitar at the open mic as a house guitar as well. Yeah. Uh, it's one from Gear for Music. All right. Costs less than £100, but. Oh, you're getting a phone call, Paul. I'll just, just cancel that. I'll just cancel that. <laughs> it's quite a nice wee tune there. I love these YouTube videos where, uh, you must have seen them, <laughs> where, where they're teaching you to play a guitar song or something. And yeah. Then, and then the. the, the the, the, there's a knock on the door and yeah. the guy's saying oh there's that postman again and I, just, sorry and he goes to the door and he picks this parcel and I'm watching this parcel being delivered 24 yeah. times yeah <laughs> stupid isn't it that's <laughs> that <laughs> someone's persistent someone is persistent we just have to turn the phone on quiet I Mark. will put it on put it on quiet and then they can keep calling you <laughs> yeah right well what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you play yourself out we We've had a good chat, we've, we've talked about chat. equipment, um, we've talked yeah. about the album. Um, so, I don't um, usually do this, folks, but I'm going to let, I usually have an outro as well, but I'm going to let Mark play a wee tune and on it for an outro. Okay. Do Would you, you like to hear that? Shall I play a cover or shall I play something from uh, my own? I think you should play your own. Play my own? Yeah. Okay. And I'll just sit back here and relax and have the coffee <coughs> right. and listen. Okay, so uh, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, really you've enjoyed it. It's been great. Uh, this is a song from my album Airbrush Hollywood and it's called, uh, it's in celebration of black and white photography which uh, as I'm sure Hugh would agree yes. is something special. And films. Um, we wouldn't have had uh, Lauren and Hardy without them. Yep. So there you go. So here we go, here's uh, black and white. Everything's better in black and white 
Get in the dark room and I think I might take a picture of you. That you'll say, let's go shoot and refocus all day. Yeah, try and hold that pose, and I'll try and keep my eyes on your toes. Cause we've got man ray at home, we don't need cold to cold. Everything's better in black and white Getting me all together And I think I might Take a picture of you Ooh. Everything's better in black and white Everything's better in black and white Folks, it's on my album. <laughs> there it is, there, black and white itself. Uh, it's been fun, Hugh. Thank you been very fun, much. Mate. Thanks all very right. much for having me and uh, looking at your life, your musical right. life. And uh, I wish you all the best with your uh, video yeah. work. Cause not just your musical life, everything that goes on around you. Yep. And um, hopefully, I'll be able to come and see you Wednesday. So, take Thank care. you very much. We'll see right. you later. Okay, folks. Bye, folks. Mark Whiteley. Thank you.